Hello guys, just a quick video from me today. It's been a really busy week and I haven't done much modeling to be honest, but I do want to tell you about a project which I'll be working on in the next few weeks uh, and possibly months as well. So I received two packages this week from Scale Models HQ. You may remember they were kind enough to send me the European house model kit which I built a while ago. And in fact, I still have the third part of that build to upload. And this week they sent me two packages. This envelope here is definitely the smaller of the two. So let's start with that. So if we have a look in here, we've got a variety of uh, metal tools sold by SMHQ. These are our Lexan brand tools. We've got some tools here for helping us build the model. We've got some stencils for painting and a few things for weathering as well. Some super glue applicators there. So we've got eight different sets there. We'll come back to those in a moment. And just a quick reminder that if you do want anything from Scale Models HQ, you can get a 10% discount on their website using the code MN10. Scale Models HQ were also kind enough to send me a kit to use those tools on and to test them out. So let me go get it. And here it is. This is an absolutely huge kit. It is truly massive. I've got my camera zoomed out as far as it will go and I've increased the height of my tripod as well. And you still can't see the whole thing. This is one of those sort of uh, legendary kits that you seem to see in every model shop you go into uh, up there on the top shelf somewhere. But I never seem to see anyone who, uh, who buys one or has, who has built one. Truly massive vehicle, truly massive kit. This is over 1700 parts. It's uh, over a meter in length and uh, 200 millimeters uh, in width. And of course, I need to say a huge thank you to Scale Models HQ for sending this to me. I'm really looking forward to building this and to producing the best model I can. So in terms of background, this is the Dora railway gun, which was originally developed by the Germans in the late 1930s. Originally, it was designed to attack the Maginot Line during the Battle of France, uh, but it wasn't ready in time. However, it was deployed later on the Eastern Front against the uh, Soviets. And this category of railgun was the heaviest artillery piece ever built. Uh, it weighs almost 1,500 tons, and it was also the largest caliber rifled weapon ever used in combat. It fires shells that weigh 7 tons, and can fire them uh, nearly 47 kilometers or 29 miles. Only two of these guns were ever built. One of them was the uh, Gustav, and the second was the Dora. And a third version was being built when the war in Europe came to an end. You can't tell so well there from the box art, but it runs on uh, dual railways, so two railway tracks in parallel. When the Gustav gun was deployed in the uh, siege of Sevastopol, it took 4,000 men five weeks to get this gun into a uh, firing position, including getting it set up and uh, getting the railway tracks uh, laid and all, and all those uh, other things are necessary. Uh, 4,000 men, five weeks. And apparently to fire the gun requires a crew of 500 men, uh, which might explain why Hobby Boss don't include the crew in the box. Uh, I think that's a fairly, fairly fair decision on their part there. I'm sorry about the glare on the top of the box there. It's quite hard to avoid on such a big box. Let's have a look at the side of the box and we get this lovely profile here of the gun. I'm really looking forward to building this kit, so let's have a quick look inside. Taking off the lid, we've got some instructions and a paint guide, which we'll come back to shortly. And you can see everything's really neatly packed here. Very well protected. We've got a series of separate uh, boxes and very handily, the artwork on the front of the box tells you what's inside. So we've got two there the same for essentially the sides of the, uh, the main body. We'll come back to those in a moment. A few more boxes here and then underneath these protectors we've got lots of individual screws here all in plastic bags all in uh, individual foam packing as well i mean two minds there in terms of uh, protecting the pieces versus the uh, the use of plastic here got a big box here with the tracks let's have a look at this one first So this is one of the rail bed sections. There are eight or nine of these in the box. It's very similar to the track that came with the Hobby Boss BR57 that I built a while ago. 
except of course this is a double width track. There's some good height on that as well and it's nicely reinforced underneath. These pieces snap together nicely and there are nine of them in total so that gives you some idea of the overall length of the track pieces. You also get this nice end plate here for the end of the railway line. I'm assuming that's because the railway lines for this gun would be built specifically um, in the position that they needed it. It wouldn't run on an existing rail network. We also have the rails here. Looking at these there are no ejector pin marks inside the rails which is really handy because they can be a pain to remove. They do look quite big though. I know this was mentioned on another channel that these might be out of scale. However, I'm wondering because they are specifically designed for the Dora, I'm wondering if maybe that isn't the case. I'm not quite sure, I need to look that one up. But they look solid anyway. Let's look in a couple of the other boxes. So in here it looks like we have pieces related to the, uh, the gun barrel and the breech, I think. Quite a few pieces there, all individually wrapped. I'm not going to open them now just because I don't want to uh, get anything damaged or lost. And here in this long end opening box, we have got what? Okay, a nice bit of photo etch here. Let's take that out. So this is really nicely detailed photo etch, which looks like some kind of um, like steel walkway or gantry or something. Very finely detailed. You need to keep that safe. And then we've got some decals. I'll just lift up the side of the protecting paper so you can see them. Lots of railway information markings and things here for the side. Nothing particularly exciting, but it will obviously make the model look more realistic when it's got those markings on there. And then we've got this big flatbed piece here, which I'm assuming is the, uh, the base for the gun itself. And again, you can just about see on the camera there, it's got a very nice non-slip sort of metal texture on it. That's going to come up very nicely when it's painted and weathered, I think. A bit more photo etch there, some smaller parts, also looking like grills or uh, non-slip surfaces. And finally, carefully unwrapping this bit here. Okay, so we've got lots of very, very delicate rails in here. Of course, being 172nd scale, these are very thin, so they're nicely protected inside this uh, big wrapping of uh, foam. Let's take a quick look at this sprue here as well, which is the barrel. You can see the size of this just from the markings on the uh, cutting mat below. The barrel comes in halves, of course, so one long seam line to fix there, but that should be okay. And then another sprue here, again with some railings and a few bits of the, uh, I think that's the breech and so on. And then the last piece I'm going to look at are these side panels here. You can see there's a good amount of detail here, all these sort of bolts and so on. We've got some wires, cables running alongside them, a few of the bits and pieces. And then basically these go together and that forms, I think, one side of the gun, or the carrier rather. And then there's another one in another box. And so you can see this on its own is what, 40, about 47 centimeters long. And that's before we have the carriers on the uh, either end of that. I'm not going to pull every sprue out right now just for this quick preview video, just because they are all packed really well. And I don't want to get any of them damaged before I actually need them for the construction. So what I'll probably do is show you in a build video, I'll show you the sprues ahead of time that I'll be using in that individual video. This build will be, I would say, two or three videos at least, and, and then the painting on top of that. Let's have a quick look at the instructions though. So we've got a nice sprue map in the front, covers two pages. And the initial page is just setting up that, um, that railway line, that railway track that I showed you. Here is one of the front carrier wagons. We'll need two of those. And 
Ah, and this is where the photo etch is used. So that photo etch is used all in one piece there. That's quite unique. And that basically is that metal grill that goes across the top of this wagon. That's really cool. I think that'll provide a great amount of detail there. I think at this small scale, you could have forgiven Hobby Boss for providing a solid platform with the detail just um, molded into it. But they've actually provided photo edge there so you can get the, uh, the proper effect. That's really good. Same thing there for the rear wagons. You can see how those carrier wagons go together there. And this that we see here is um, just the front. So we've got one on each side at the front, and then something similar at the back as well. So quite a few um, carrier wagons, quite a few things to build before you get onto the gun itself. Then we move on to the gun, or the, the base of the gun. There's a lot of detail in this kit, but I think Hobby Boss make these instructions reasonably clear. Just skipping through here a little bit. Right, so here we can see that final setup. So we've got, what, eight of those uh, wheeled wagons and then four of those carrying plates uh, on top of those. And then we've got the main, uh, the main body of the gun on top of that. So this is a lot of kit to build. I'm really looking forward to it. So let's take a quick look back at those tools. I've split them into two groups. So these are the tools used for building models. I'm struggling a bit with glare here. First up, we have this handy little file. It's got uh, three different grits there. As you can see the coarse one at the top, a much finer one down there, and a, uh, a medium one over there on the left-hand side. So that should be quite interesting. I'll give that a go when I'm cleaning up these pieces. And of course, I guess a metal file is quite handy for cleaning up the edges of any PE as well, when you get those little nubs, when you remove it from the PE uh, fret. Secondly, with quite a lot of glare still, we have this uh, dual purpose tool. The curved outside edges of this are um, for scraping seams on gun barrels. So you basically put your gun barrel into the curve, you find the, the uh, right size, you put your gun barrel into the curve and just scrape down there to remove that seam. And the aim there is that you avoid getting those flat spots that you can sometimes get if you're using sandpaper to get rid of the seams. And then the other part of this tool is um, to bend handles. So you can see the little holes there in the middle of the tool. And basically you put your wire through those holes and you can bend the end of handles um, across there. The holes, of course, are different widths apart. So you can get slightly different width handles going on. So I guess if there were any handles I wanted to replace on this Dora, I could get a small piece of wire and just use that tool for that, uh, that purpose. The third tool is this angle scraper. You can see along the top there, we've got several different sizes from one to 2.5 mil. And down the left and the right edge, we've got different uh, angles. I'm not 100% sure of a scenario where I really would use this, but I'm sure it's one of those situations where uh, if you need it, this tool will be extremely helpful. I can't think of one straight right off the top of my head, but I'm sure there are examples. So I'll keep that somewhere on my desk handy, just in case uh, it is needed. And then finally, in terms of tools, we have these super glue applicators. I can imagine these being extremely useful. These are all slightly different sizes on the end in terms of the uh, their capacity to carry glue, I guess. These will be a big upgrade from my uh, usual cocktail stick method of applying super glue. So I can imagine with all that photo etch on the Dora, these will come in there very handy. Now moving on to the painting and weathering tools. We've got four of those. First up is this, um, I guess you'd describe it as a gothic 
uh, stencil. So you can see clearly it contains the alphabet uppercase and lowercase and the numbers. I'm not sure if there's any uh, writing on the DARA itself, I'll check that, but you can see this would be very useful for a variety of applications. This could be anything from uh, sort of names on the side of tanks to shop signs in a diorama, that kind of thing. And these photo etched stencils are designed so that you can uh, break away the individual letters. You can bend them on the horizontal and the vertical here and just snap them away. So, so you put the individual letter down and then just mask around it to protect against overspray. That's going to be very useful. That I'm, I'm looking forward to using that one. Here we have a stencil that's got a variety of uses. It could be used for, well, I suppose even it could be used for camouflage. Um, although perhaps not very accurate World War II camouflage, but it could be mainly used for paint distressing um, or for uh, corrosion and dirt effects and things like that. Got different size uh, cutaways there. And of course you can use these in different ways. So you can hold them flat against the model and get a very, very sharp straight edge. Or you can hold them slightly away from the surface and airbrush through them and you get a slightly more diffused edge as the paint spreads out once it's gone past the stencil. I can imagine myself using this a lot on the, uh, the side of the uh, Dora. And especially when you've got something like the Dora, which is a, a single colour, that kind of uh, uh, classic German grey colour, having some kind of paint distressing um, or, or just, you know, just variation will make a big difference, especially on a kit that size. Next we've got this uh, streaking uh, stencil. So clearly this would be best used for things like uh, grime streaking down, mud streaking down a vehicle, things like that, with that very wide area at the top running down uh, in thinner streaks. Quite delicate this stencil too, actually. I have to be careful of this one because it's got some very thin parts there. But we can see we've got different widths. We've got everything from individual streaks down to a, quite a wide uh, area of streaks there. So you can apply those you know, according to the size of your model, really, according to the size of the space that you're painting. Finally, we have this scratches stencil. Got a variety of damage and scratches here. Uh, some running just sort of uh, horizontally, some sort of crisscrossing each other, some thicker scratches, some thinner ones. I do like painting scratch effects, but sometimes if you're brushing them by hand, they do tend to uh, sort of stand out a bit, you know, uh, brush paint is always going to be slightly thicker than airbrushed paint. So perhaps using something like this could, uh, could be very helpful to keep that paint nice and thin, especially again on a, on a 172nd scale kit, where obviously uh, the thickness of the brush paint would be even thicker in the scale. I've actually just, I'm just thinking about my Ram Tiger now. I've actually just finished painting that with some chipping effects. Otherwise I could have used it there as well. Okay guys, so that was a quick preview of the things which were very kindly sent to me by Scale Models HQ. In some upcoming videos, I'll be using those tools to help me complete the build of the Dora. And I'm hoping to get that Dora build started uh, now this weekend. Just a quick reminder that if you do like any of the products from Scale Models HQ, you can go to their website and you can get a 10% discount from them using the code which is on screen now, which is MN for Model Nerd, MN10. And I'll leave that code in the description as well, along with a link to the website. Hopefully my next video will be a nice build video for you. I seem to have lots of projects which are uh, steering towards complete, but taking quite a long time to get there. Uh, it's not been helped by the extremely cold weather recently, which of course affects things like, you know, the Tamiya TS spray paints and so on, if you're putting down a, a gloss coat or something. Um, or also just the fact that as much as I love modeling, uh, modeling in the garage when it's minus two is um, slightly less bearable than, than I would like. Um, but I will have a video for you guys soon. Uh, I've got a nice little uh, mini diorama, which is almost finished. I literally need to put some decals on and give it a final coat. I'm not gonna do much weathering on that one. Uh, I've been doing some 3D printing recently for my Ram Tiger. That's going to go into a diorama. And I've been shouting a little bit at my Lancasters recently because Airfix seem to have molded the Bombay doors to resemble something like a banana and that makes it quite hard to attach. So maybe I'll even use these uh, super glue applicators that I showed you today to try to get those, those Bombay doors on. 
I really want to get those Lancasters finished. They're going to look good, but I'm afraid I may be sending some more curse words in Airfix's direction before I get them finished. Anyway, guys, um, before I go, let me say thank you to all of you for watching and a special thanks to my Patreon supporters. I really appreciate the support that all of you guys offer to this channel. Uh, I love to read your comments. I do try to answer all of my comments and uh, I really appreciate any you know feedback and I, I love uh, the suggestions that you guys often give of different ways to do things or ways to make things look a bit better. Uh, so keep it coming, guys. If you haven't subscribed as well, then, uh, well, you know where the button is, don't you? Um, if you don't like the video, then you can click the dislike button twice. Uh, if you do like it, then uh, feel free to hit like once. And uh, I will see you in a future video. Take care, guys, and have fun modeling.